Oh dear, we're going live. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, I don't know whether this is the greatest thing I've ever done or the, the bloody stupidest, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but I'm, I'm back down in the workshop. Um, just before anybody freaks out and thinks I've given up making films and I'm going to spend the rest of my life boring you uh, with live streams evening, Mr. Paul Cooper. I have not. I'm working on two films at the moment. The first one, which should be out, I was hoping it was going to be out this week actually, um, is to make a, an injection pump uh, for soft plastics, which the film is nearly finished. Um, and the other one is that. Oh, let's get this hang on. And the other film I'm working on at the moment is still the lizard layer. Which should be later this later next week. So I would have thought maybe latest Monday, Tuesday for the injector. And then the other film about building the lizard probably towards the weekend. We'll see how we get on. Um, I just need to set up this so I can answer some questions. So I won't be a sec. And then I'll get straight into it. Where am I? Chat amongst yourselves. That's a bit ridiculous doing a live stream and then asking you to talk amongst yourselves. But there we go, there we go. Ooh, let's click on that and I'm done. Um, so last week I did a, I just an impromptu live stream. So week I did a, I just Let me turn that volume off. Live. I did a kind of impromptu live stream and just asked, you know, what would people like me to live stream about? And one of the suggestions I got was um, basically the first layers I made. So a bit of, bit of backstory and a bit of history. So I kind of went and did a bit of routing. I'll just tilt this down. This is my kind of box of uh, old layers and junk, which has got my first layers in it. So I'm gonna show you the first layer I ever made. I'll try and answer your questions as I go, which is this. I don't know whether that's in focus. Um, it was a trout layer, and it's about probably about twelve years old. I made this from a, a, a bit of stick. Um, these fins here are from a baked bean can, um, and I think that's a staple layer. And it used to have a hook in here. It's about two inches long, um, painted with just acrylic paints and covered with I think nail varnish, probably my own or <laughs> my own <laughs> selection of nail varnish. But I basically made this for trout fishing at the time i was living in yorkshire um which is i don't know about 40 50 miles away but kind of inland um and i was fishing in a little tiny stream for trout basically and i went out and i bought a boatload of fishing layers to go trout fishing and basically lost them in a, in a couple of hours or a weekend and i thought you know what i'm just gonna make my own and see how i get on and this really kicked it off. Um, the idea was it was the idea of it was basically the fins were to make it dive and wobble, but without getting caught in the weed. And the little hook in the back was to do the catching part. I absolutely battered the, the trout with this on that little stretch um, of river for I don't know. I think I was there for about two or three months before I moved on. Um, I didn't really know what the hell I was doing. I didn't have any books on making fishing layers, so I just kind of got on with it, and this is what I came up with, which I kept it because, you know, just basically for sentimental value. It's not the greatest thing in the world. You can see the paint colour in there is pretty, <laughs> pretty bloody awful. There was no air, airbrushing involved at all in that. Um, so that was the first layer I really remember making. I spent... Um, I think probably about three or four months just making all kinds of bonkers layers. I did no idea what the hell I was doing, as you can probably tell. Um, some for pike fishing, some for trout fishing. I think I made sharks. I made multi-jointed things, things from bits of string. But I left Yorkshire not long after that and went up to live in Scotland. Um, if you've seen some of my recent videos, you've probably seen... Uh, me fishing on Mull and that's where I was living on a small island for about five years um, and doing fishing basically at least once a day I was I spent a lot of time working on a pier working in a boat 
um, shipping people backwards and forwards and and just basically fished myself silly mackerel fishing pollock fishing um it's just phenomenal times i mean you can see if you've seen the films up there um if you've seen the films up there you'll see what it's like it's just an amazing place the island mall in scotland um right what was i going to show you next then so apparently somebody says i need to reply to you what's the biggest fish you caught i blame you for getting me into this making my own layers that's from bison any templates you can email us yes you can't yes if you want temp i'll just answer some questions quickly if you want templates just email me paul p adam aol.com and i'll send the lot out to you um, some are still available on different places underneath the the videos you can find them um i'll just answer a few more questions what was your favorite project you've ever done i don't think i i've got one to be honest the kind of at the time they're all great um it's, it's afterwards i kind of <laughs> i forget about them i put them to one side so at the time of doing them they're always kind of the best unless i'm having real problems but then i kind of they fade and that's why i've got loads of layers in this box because kind of when they've when i've done with them i don't kind of keep hanging around forever uh I'm not giving any advice on what tackle to buy. What PSI do you use on your airbrush? Roughly somewhere between about 25 and about 40. Depends what I'm spraying. Hello, hello Estonia. Um, so back to fishing lures. This here, you should get a box account to upload and simply add a link to it. Mr. Flip, do you ever send some lures to Abyssinia? Send some lures, I think that should be. Uh, next fishing lure what did I do from there so when I was in Scotland I was tying a lot I, I really started making making an attempt to carve big layers this was really one of the first layers I really started to carve this is a pollock layer with a with a big lip um, I caught a lot of pollock with this I mean it was just naked wood basically and the idea came from a lot of Australian layer makers do nudie layer or naked layers, and this was one of them. I caught a, a lot of big pollock, but recently I took this to Ireland. I hadn't used it for years, um, and I thought it was a great layer, and I gave it going Ireland, and it's not. It's absolutely awful. It doesn't wobble or anything, so God knows why the fish were attacking it. It really is bloody awful, to be honest. Uh, it does look nice, and it took me a long time to carve it. It's It was a bit of a pine... Um, pine bed i think it was and i gave it this is my first experiments with epoxy i think that's in virotex um but you know i caught fish with it but as i say when i took it to ireland it didn't wobble or anything it just basically dived in a straight line it, one of the what when i was in scotland living on an island it was very difficult to get all the stuff so most of the layers i was making was junk um i've got some here actually Hi from New Jersey. Hello there, New Jersey. This uh, was one of the first poppers I made, and it was actually a piece of an old rocking chair from the leg of a rocking chair that I just basically cut down. I used to use this for pollock fishing over shallow reefs and really hammer the fish with it. But I kind of, um, I didn't have a lathe up there, so I was using, making poppers out of basically chair legs, table legs, um, anything round and, and layer shaped. Um, hello Toon Army the first kind of plastic layers I made were these kind of things um, which spoons is the only description popper I meant laugh my arse off I don't know what I'm doing with this live stream actually I think I've run out of steam um, <laughs> I'll show you the worst layer I ever made. Um, this, hi from Newcastle. Hi Newcastle. This is one of the worst layers I ever made. Um, it's my first attempt at making a balsa layer and it was kind of inspired by Japanese layer makers. I, I, I made this while I was up in, in Scotland um, and I went and cast it on its first cast. It was so badly weighted that the actual wind took it and blew it behind me. And when I actually got it in the water, it kind of swam 
like this on its side and even with hooks it kind of weighs on its side the reason i kept this i mean it's foil as you can see it was i just thought this i think is probably the worst i'm ever going to make a lay so at least you know um at least things can only get better um so that's why i kept it and interestingly not long after that i, I kind of spent a lot of time improving it this is a fox minnow um, let me just see if I've got a few more of these, which I did a series of videos on how to make, and it was basically based on this uh, original, the crap layer. And I spent months kind of messing around with it until I had uh, what I wanted. Um, and, and that series of videos I did was basically to, the Fox Minnow was basically to, because I think I was so frustrated with layer making that I wanted other people to, not have all that shit to go through to actually learn how to make a layer, but just have some basic instructions to follow and get on with it. Um, right, questions. Any questions? Any question? Do you have it? Oh, there we go. You actually answer the comments, thank you. Yeah, I do occasionally answer the comments. I don't get to them all, but I try the best I can. Do you ever like make layers out of bark? No, I've never made layers out of bark. Um, I know Miko has, and, and it was a kind of what started Rapala was making bark fishing layers when they couldn't get hold of balsa. Hi, Paul from Kissimmee, Florida. It's Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Has Miko visited you yet? No, he hasn't actually. Um, no, oddly enough, but I wouldn't mind going to Finland. A tour of your tools and your favourite equipment. I'll probably do that at a later stage. Can you make the lizard? Yes, that's what I'm working on. If you've missed the first bit, hopefully next week. Um, he did make a trip to Canada. Yeah, that's Mick. I went to Canada. I think he may have a lady over there or his lady's from there. I don't know. I can't possibly comment about somebody else's. Um, I've just started a new project making Lucky Craft Sammy like uh, Yes. What's the hardest layer you've ever made? Uh, somebody else asked me this from one of my patrons. Um, I don't... I, this was actually... These plastic layers were really the hardest thing I ever had to learn because I started from scratch. I don't know whether you can see that. So I kind of had to teach myself how to make moulds, how to make things out of plastic, um, how to deal with lead, how to paint things, how to treat it. Um, and it was it was a it was like months of a nightmare. I would go like four steps forward and five steps back. Um, I had so many problems trying to make these. I think I've got this will probably show you a better idea. I don't know whether you can see that. There's the bottom one finished and the top one's it naked. So you can see the weight inside there. Hello. Is that Machek? Hello, Machek. Haha, <laughs> I can see you're wearing the camera t-shirt. Yes. <laughs> That's Barry from London. This is my, this, this is a t-shirt I made to stick a camera in. Uh, because I was too poor for a GoPro. <laughs> so I had a little tiny crappy camera that used to just fit in this t-shirt. I, I keep this because it's, it's the worst video uh, response I've ever got. I think I, it's still only got about 7,000 views, the video that goes with making this t-shirt. The t-shirt was great to be honest, I used it for ages and then after I stopped, the, after the camera broke, once it, it was a waterproof camera, I put it in the water and it died. I used to put my little voice recorder in here so I could talk, piece to talk to camera. So cheers Barry for reminding me. Uh, yeah, I, I do still turn layers on the lathe. Somebody's asking me the, the lathe's over there. I haven't used it for ages. Uh, what's the best wood to use that sinks better? Anything really. I mean, it, I don't think there is a best wood to use. Um, hello, Paul. Love your creative methods. Keep it up, Dan, down the road in Warrington. Cheers, Dan. If you were limited to just one colour combo on a hard layer, what would it be? Uh, I like um, blue, red and silver. Something like that. That would be my favourite colour. Any bass fishing tips? I don't do bass fishing, so I can't really give you that. <laughs> I can't really give you bass fishing tips. I don't know where this video is going. 
<laughs> but I did have a thought. I'm in I'm in my the basement. This is my dad's workshop uh, underneath the house, um, and I'm talking to a camera. And I've just I'm, I'm making a Wayne's World video by the looks of it. Does anybody want to see anything else from what I've made videos uh, layers wise in the past? Oh, what's next? Uh, well, I said that earlier. I'm, what's the biggest fish you've ever caught? I, I don't know, to be honest. I caught a pretty big pollock in Scotland once and a decent sized pike in Ireland, but I don't, I don't really measure them, to be honest. Um, I don't weigh fish, I don't measure them. I very rarely take pictures of them, either, only for when I'm filming. It's kind of, you know, um, can you make a lure with a goatee and a flat cap? Somebody else. What's the biggest lure you've made? Um, I did make a long stringy thing uh, with some wool and bits of stuff like a snake years ago and that was probably about 300 mil long um, but these I made some big ones of these these are eels that I made for pollock fishing these are polymer clay there's a video on there about them and I made some of these up to about I think 400 mil maybe 450 mil long Hi Max from Washington. So these are probably the biggest layers. It's an eel there. Um, do you plan to make more videos about uh, the flicking pass? Uh, other than layer making, what tickles you fancy? Filmmaking. I, I, I answered that before. It's either filmmaking or layer making. And if I'm not making films, it's making layers. Have you done any with rattles in the middle? Yes, recently I have done. Actually, I don't think I've got anything here, but yeah, I'm putting rattles in. Uh, Paul, this is from Matchek. When will you start making proper size lures? Thanks, Matchek. How about a survival episode where you make a fishing lure from trash? I'm always making fishing lures from trash. I did one recently in Scotland of making fishing lures from uh, knife handles. Uh, do you still use any store-bought lures? No, oddly enough. Um, I'm just thinking... Oh, although, saying that, I was fishing with a couple of lads at the weekend, uh, last weekend, and I borrowed a lure off somebody. I can't remember what it was, but generally I don't buy any. So I, I steal lures off other people that are store-bought, and people send me lures. Um, but generally I don't go and buy lures, which is a bit odd. Any more floats or other things... Layers. What I was going to show you is, um, yeah, fishing vids. I'm not sure this live stream is bloody working out, actually. I had these plans of what I was going to show you. Here's some odd projects. Let's just go through this. This is a duck layer that I started. One of those things that I kind of got part way through. This is the actual, this is a clay sculpture. And I made a mould, which some of you might rec <laughs> recognise from shopping expeditions in, in various... You know, <laughs> but what came out of that was, yes, Casey Knee knows what I'm talking Oh, yes. Oh, TJH. <laughs> yeah, I think some people want to borrow this mould. And that's what came out of it, basically, out of that mould. <laughs> I'll just show that again. It Oh, sorry, wrong way up. That's that's beautiful, that. <laughs> but that's a duck. That's a video, really, I want to make. Um, but probably next year. And it's based on... Um, there's a guy who made a very famous layer-making book. I've forgotten his name. Um, and it's based on his design. But obviously, I've made this in plastic. This is rotocast in plastic. Uh, with two. I'm going to have to show you that again, aren't I? There you go. Lovely. Uh, other projects in the making. Ah, uh, it smells like fish. It does. Thumbs up from you. Do you remember this little bug? Uh, this little fella. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't know what I'm doing with this. Do I really? I've no concept what a live stream is about. I think basically, one of them tentacle things you like for me before. I was going to try them with polymorph plastic to make the worms and the ejection. I think um, 
I think the only thing you can do a live stream about is either one, making something that you've done before. So I think if I do a live stream again, it's going to have to be me making something I've done before. Um, or two, a Q&A. And I don't think I can do a question and answer every week. It'd just be inanely boring. I'd be answering the same questions. Um, yes, exactly. Neil Fisher live stream equals answer zone. Did you ever consider making bioplastic layers? I was talking to somebody about this in the week, about bioplastic layers. Um, and the trouble with uh, the soft plastic layers is making them is that it stinks, basically. You're making PVC and it stinks, and it stinks the house out. Um, you know, I do it in the in the outhouse, and it still gets into the house, the smell of it. So really something that doesn't, like a, a bioplastic, would be great. But the trouble with the bioplastics is I've never seen anything that's kind of worked really well. They all have to have bits of string in them and dissolve. Unless somebody out there has got something bioplastic wise that they can send me that I can use to make fishing soft plastic fishing layers, that would be great. Or they could sell me something or whatever. Yeah, that would be a great thing. I did look at silicon. I spoke to somebody about silicon um, using it this week. But the trouble with silicon is it's slow curing. Um, why is your voice so relaxing? I have no idea. People keep saying that to me. That that my voice sends them to sleep. I think it's because I maybe used to read children's stories to the kids all the time. Any scented oils for your soft plastic? Yes, scented oils. No, I don't really use scented oils. What I use is Thai fish sauce, which is great. Thai fish sauce is great because oils tend to wash off the baits and leave you with a slick on the surface, but the Thai fish sauce tends to um, kind of dissolve in the water, almost to spread out for the water. When you make it a, an aluminium layer mold, I will do at some point when somebody gives me a CNC machine or Father Christmas brings one, but it's way down on my list of priorities. I'd rather try things um, by hand. Ever fish for salmon? No, sea trout's the closest I've got when I was in Scotland. Um, I don't know what else to do, to be honest. Is there anything anybody would like to see out of the lures I've made in the past that's actually interesting? Never done any ice fishing, too fat to go on the ice. Somebody asked me. Uh, can you do more videos about how to make layers out of household items? <laughs> yes, I can do. What's your favourite pike layer? Um, what's my favourite pike layer? I don't really have one, to be honest. Um, what's the smallest layer you've ever made? It's probably that. Or the worms, which was the little Coca-Cola thing. Um, little vibe layer. Favourite material to work with? Um, I don't know, to be honest. I would I would say probably... Uh, probably wood is my favourite material to work with. It, 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 sometimes it's just really great and relaxing to actually um, make a piece of wood. Make something, you know, turn a piece of wood into a lure. Where do I get my soft plastics from? I get them from either lure factors or bright baits. Lure factors are in the UK or bright baits are in Belgium, I think it is. It's a perch layer. Yes, it is a perch layer. Um, any other questions? What software do you use um, with my cameras? Uh, I use, what do I use? Sony Movie Studio. Sony Movie Studio. How do I use fish sauce? Thai fish sauce? Well, I like a mean Thai fish curry, but how do I use it? I just basically put my soft plastic layers in a tub with it. That's all I do. I leave them to soak in there. What's the weirdest layer you've ever made? I would say probably... Um, the beetle. Which is a very odd layer. I don't know. I think... I remember where the idea of the layer came from. I was... I was emptying a water supply and it was absolutely riddled with diving beetles and I thought that would make a nice fishing layer. Um, have I ever went hunting? Only when I was a kid with an air rifle. Um, what do you do for a living? Make videos and various bits and bobs. Uh, wine cork popper. Well, I think I've, if I'm being 100% honest, I failed, completely failed this evening with the idea I had for making a video. I just realised how boring it is to sit and listen to a guy talk about layers um 
So I don't know. I, I'm going to have to go back to finishing these films so you can actually watch something that's remotely interesting. The Young Huntsman's asking me what's the best spinning rod for the UK. I have no idea. Um, go to the local tackle shop. Get the guy out from behind the counter. Get him to put his chip butty down and come and talk to you and show you these different rods that he's got. Um, that's easy. I think I'm going to go and get something to drink, unless there's anything else. What camera do you recommend for a newbie? I would say a Sony 100. A Sony 100, basically. Um, 100X, is it? Uh, what's my full-time job? It, well, I don't have a full-time job. Child care and making films, basically. Uh, one more. Sony A6000, yeah, great camera. Great camera. I, I don't really set that much store by cameras. You know, as long as it's 1080, um, the, the, the pixel counts, as long as it's producing 1080p. RX100, yeah, that's the camera, the Sony. Um, the light is the most important thing, is getting a huge amount of light. I've got two big lights in here that I use to film with. So as long, it's great if you're filming outdoors, um, but the biggest, most important thing is not the camera, is actually getting as much light as you can. What's my favourite style of fishing? Um, I would say probably mackerel fishing. Uh, that's, that's pretty cool. Will I be making more bobbers? Yes, I will be making some more bobbers. Um, I've got some good ideas to do with bobbers. Maybe for next spring. Um, I kind of, I, I really do love float fishing to be honest, and I kind of miss it. Um, I haven't really been doing any for a while, but it's kind of, it's just a relaxing way of fishing. Can you make a film about how to make a wooden spoon for pike? Uh, I suppose so. At some point, I don't have, as I said before, I don't have a favourite layer. I think I'm, uh, I'm going to call it quits. Will I be making any more lure challenge videos? More polymer clay layers. Will I be making any more challenge videos? I don't know actually. I I, I think what's the word? Um, what I it kind of my dream would be to make films um, about a lure. You know, pick out one lure and make a film about it. Maybe a Rapala. You know, me making it, maybe visiting the factory, you know, maybe going fishing. And that kind of story of, of a lair would be great. Um, and not so much of a challenge. I, I, I kind of get bored of them videos is can we go and catch something with something? You know, can we catch a... Although I've made a few, to be honest. But can we go and catch something with a toilet brush? Or can we catch a lair? You, you, you know, if you try hard enough, I've caught fish with naked bear hook so you're going to catch something in the end it's just going to take you a lot of time and not really be fun um so i i'd, I'd really like to make some kind of in-depth film that's about making layers that's on a bit of a bigger scale than me just being in the cellar maybe one day um somebody from a tv company will give me some money but then i think they'll probably want a better present <laughs> presenter than me to make the film probably somebody uh, you know, I won't say that. Uh, a road trip, uh, yeah, that's a good. That's always a good idea for a film, isn't it? A road trip. Make a spoot out of a toilet brush handle. Yeah, yeah. Do you fish for cod? Um, not really. I used to, to be honest. I could go and fish for cod in the river down here. We've got the Mersey, and in the winter they tend to come in. Hi from Russia. Hi to Russia. I did have an, uh, uh, another question from one of my Patreon patrons which was what layer would you like to make in the future um and i kind of i can't really give an answer to that to be honest something i've never made before there's so many things that i want to try and try and do um layer wise there's so many things i've never made and so many things i want to um maybe try or try something different that I, I can't really say there's just bolt loads of things that i want to try do a video, somebody who's asking me to do a video with Totally Awesome Fishing. Uh, that would be great, to be honest. I would love to go and do a film with them. Maybe one day they'll invite me. <laughs> I, I, let me sleep on the garage floor. Or I could sleep in, they've got another channel now, haven't they? Totally Awesome uh, Survival. So I could probably go and sleep in the woods. When did I start making layers? Um, about 10, 12, 15 years ago. Something weedless. 
Totally awesome fishing is a good idea. Have you ever fished the Bristol Channel? No. Paul, would you like to make a 40 centimetre layer? Yes, Matchek. But if I made a 40 centimetre layer, Matchek, and brought it over, you would say to me it's not big enough. Are you from Liverpool? Yeah, I am. I am from Liverpool. I'm actually in Liverpool at the moment. Uh, what fishing line is best? I buy cheap and nasty braid from China. Do uh, deep sea wrecking layers competition? Who makes the best? Oh. Uh, hey, what's up? I love your videos. I would like to see another tiny tackle box video. Yeah, I kind of I've been using that these tiny Altoid tin um, tackle boxes. This is one I think I made years ago. Yeah, it's got a spinner in it. But these, I, I love going fishing. I've recently I've been drop shotting again and um, going fishing with these little tiny boxes, uh, just with a few layers in. I take a little tiny net that I can shove in my bag and on a small rod, and it's it's great. And when I go out feeder fishing, I've got a box and rests and bloody huge net and all kinds of nonsense. These are fishing like this is absolutely great. It reminds me of being a kid, to be honest. So yeah, I'll probably do, and that would be a good idea for a video is to make a, a kind of small fishing set and go out and use it again like to trinidad love the altoid tin can yeah 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 cheers uh i think that's about it everything seems to have dried up what's the biggest why is why is everybody want to know the biggest thing what's the biggest fish i don't know i could make a pen rod and keep it in my glove box yeah i'd have to get a car then i like the small fishing layer yeah What's the what's the best soft plastic for muddy water? I was fishing actually today in some bloody muddy water. Um, and I used an aluminous green layer, which a pike bit in half. I don't know whether it's here actually. I'll never put the thing. I'll show it you. I actually caught a perch with it. Pike damage. And there was a guy there fishing with uh, a savage gear next to me about the same size as this and that was a green with a with a red tail <laughs> he got his tail bitten off and the pair of us both didn't catch a pike i caught a perch with with this it literally as i was taking out the water the perch just jumped on the hook uh, can you see the duck mold again yeah why not it's just it's beautiful isn't it it's a beautiful thing i've been renting that out yeah five pound for five minutes with this uh what's the largest amount of time you i can't read that neil fisher uh would you ever try and make electric vibrating layer with leds after making this mate i should be making electric vibrating layers luba <laughs> what's the what's the device directly to the right of the drill press your right or my right let me just see what that is directly to the right this thing to the right. That's why I asked. Directly to the right of the drill press. I can't see these. There's a. I don't know what that is. A power supply. This thing you're talking about? No. Right, I'm going. What's the biggest mess up I've made about making layers? He, he used other language. I, I toned it down to be polite. The biggest mess I made was epoxy resin. Nightmare stuff. Uh, trying to coat these with epoxy. I had a hell of a time with it. it. Took me a long time to learn how to do it without messing it up. So epoxy resin, learning how to use it. That's why I did the epoxy resin video because it was just a bloody nightmare to use it. Um, I'm gonna go now. I feel like I've completely failed in what I set out to do. Um, but there you go, you win some, you lose some. Um, cheers for everybody who popped on and asked a question. Uh, I've never used UV resin, I'd like to. Um, somebody's asking me there. I will see you, well, as I say, I've got a video coming out for this, which is the uh, soft plastic injector, which is made from some plumbing fittings and fits into one of these little aluminium moulds. So hopefully Monday, Tuesday for this one. Um, and then later in the week. Oh, stay. Machek's telling me to stay. What are you going to ask me, Machek? You're underestimating these live stream. Uh, what else can I talk about then? If people want me to stay. Whiskey. 
Uh, favourite whiskey is Jora, just in case anybody's interested. If Jora Whiskey would like to sponsor um, any of these videos, or all of them, I'm quite happy for that. You can pay me in Jora Whiskey, single malt, 10 year old. Uh, have you ever made a hard body layer out of polymorph? Yes, I have. Somebody's asking me. Polymorph's this low melt plastic. Uh, I have. I've got one in here. That's polymorph inside there. Um, and what I did with it is I wrapped the polymorph around the stick so this actually floats. Uh, and you just screw screw eyes into the side. I've taken them out and then it's wrapped in a jig skin body So yes, you can make layers out of polymorph The only trouble with them is is uh, it melts at, at Temperature so if you left it on the dashboard of your car before you went fishing there's a good chance it'd just be a puddle um, But in Britain luckily we don't get those kind of temperatures that would melt polymorph unless it's left on your dash I did recently try mixing polymorph with glass bubbles and it worked great. So you can make it without the stick. You can actually make polymorph float. What do I use to make uh, rattles? Um, I've used a few things actually, but normally what I do is I just drill a hole and put a couple of bits of metal in there. So anything like bits of tin can, just for something to crash about. You should make a bio video, yeah. What was that again? Let me just say, you should make, you should make a bio video about yourself. We want to know about the past. Um, uh, maybe I could do that actually that would be an idea. I'm not sure I like that talking about myself I'm not that bloody interesting to be honest Favorite type of layer I think wood to make there's got to be more wood uh, Just sitting down relaxing whittling a bit of wood uh, You have held 100 people watching your live stream for 40 minutes and you think that We enjoy your company cheers for that I obviously appreciate that <laughs> I just think there's anything else in here that I could show you. Hi, right, Tennessee. What else have I got? Oh, do you remember this beauty? Don't worry, it's not another one of those pink sex toys. Look at that. That That is one of my favourite uh, looking layers. It's not great for fishing it, actually, although I've caught a few fish with it. Um... You know, it's not the greatest fishing layer. It tends to run pretty much in a straight line, but God, I've caught some fish with this. But a beautiful thing. A um, little bit of epoxy, a little bit of wood. Amazing. Uh, what else have we got in here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I found that. I, I couldn't remember where the hell I'd put that, to be honest. This is a little um, truncheon for bashing trout on the, trout on the head. I made out of a... What did I make that out of? Uh, rolling pin. Uh, what you say in my check? Can you show us some other, some other people's layers here? Not talking about my shit. Yeah, I'm just thinking if I've got other people's layers here. Let's have a look. See what I've got. I haven't really got other people's layers here. There's a, a, a guy from... I don't want to pronounce his name because I'm going to get it wrong, but I got a couple of layers sent to me this week. This is a little tiny sand deal that he made um, and sent it me. It's weedless. You've got this. You've got this. Um, it's beautiful, to be honest. I took this down the lake today. It was a bit murky down there, but I got a couple of perch to follow it. None of them grabbed it. Um, but really nice movement in that. You can see there that the jig head and the concealed hook, but great for, um, great for really, I'm fishing a park lake and the really the big hazards in a park lake are uh, bags of dog poo that people have thrown in. And that's really great for avoiding bags of, bags of dog poo. This is a, this is a, a uh, I think it's from Poland. Matt Czech will be able to tell me who made this. This is beautiful. Um, again, I swapped that with, with my check for something, um, my friend in Ireland. And you can see that if you can look at the detail on that face, it's kind of steampunk, um, beautiful, just just kind of really nice layer. Don Mario is asking me if I'm gay. I'm not gonna answer a question like that. I'd have to ask my wife. 
Um, looks like the Terminator. What's the hardest layer you've had to make? Uh, as I said, probably this, learning to make, um, learning to make this layer, I think, was the hardest. Starting from nothing to learning to make plastic layers and coating them. That was a huge learning curve to do that. And there wasn't really any information I could find to do it. It was kind of just make the mistakes and learn from them. Um, Hesher layers. Yes, that's the guy who made that layer. I'll just see if I've got anything else I can show you. Um, I did today, when I was rooting through, find me little skull jig heads. I think that's going to be two. Look at that. Halloween is coming. Can I just see that if we can get that in focus? No. I mean, we have got it. These are the original skull jig heads I made. These are the, the original masters, basically, and I recast them in metal. They don't look that good, actually. <laughs> from there. <laughs> that one's not too bad. Um, that, that, thanks for that. You should you should ship... I did sell some of the skulls. I put them online. People nagged me to make fishing skulls. I made fishing skulls. Nobody bought them. I sold a piddling amount after all the effort I put in, so I kind of gave up selling stuff. They do look awesome. I kind of I'm going to remake some at some point and probably give them away to my patrons on YouTube, on Patreon. I think I've got some, um, I don't think I've got any to show you, to be honest. But there we go. Hi to Chili. Uh, any other questions? I've done 41 minutes now. I didn't, how old am I? Too old. What are your favourite trout layers? Can you show them? Um, I My favourite trout layers are, I don't really carry a lot of layers, to be honest. I, I tend to make them, use them and lose them. Um, so I don't really carry a lot of fishing layers. And Trout-wise, um, my favourite trout fishing layers I haven't got with me are actually made by Polish layer makers. I'm just thinking if I brought any down. I haven't. Again, Maciek, who's Polish, give me a load of little tiny layers, which are great for catching trout. I've been using them on streams and up in reservoirs. Uh, fishing... UK online, go and check him out. Um, he does a little bit of sea fishing. I see you were fishing at West Bay, where I was fishing, God knows, three or four years ago. My mate was living at West Bay. Um, do you have any children? Yes, four. Yeah, fishing online, saying yeah. Uh, can you buy jig skins in the UK? Yes, I think. Who does them? Uh, sea, there's a company called Sea Booms UK. Um, and who else is there? Lear Lounge, I think, sells jig skins in the UK. Um, that's about it as far as I know. Uh, it's really depressing to make lots of layers and flies and not get any. Uh, where's that gone? It's really... And get them sold. Yeah, I think it, it's an odd thing making fishy layers and trying to sell them. I tried years ago to start a layer making business and sell them. And... Generally, what I find is I think people I don't know, they believe in brands. You know, when I speak to fishermen and they say, "Oh, it's a Savage Gear," as if Savage Gear have some kind of magic. And Savage Gear make great layers. I'm not knocking Savage Gear, but they, I think it's that kind of bit of magic that this is a Savage Gear layer and it's going to catch me a fish. Um, Audio Stud is asking me what was the reason for making the Minion float. Um, which, I, which is a good question to be honest this is the minion float I made um, I I tell you a story about this right, this is a bit of an odd story so you'll have to bear with me um, what happened was I was making a 12 foot dog um, I kind of I, my brother-in-law picked up this weird job somebody wanted this 12 foot dog that would move and walk uh, and turn its head and open its eyes so I was building this building this 12 foot dog and the two people I was working with building this 12-foot dog uh, were both smokers, and I stood outside talking to them. Um, and on the floor is a load of these little silver bottles. Um, and I kind of thought that would be really interesting to make a fishing lure from. So they're sitting there having a fag, and I'm picking up all these little silver bottles, which are nitrous oxide. People use them basically to get stoned. 
uh, laughing gas and I kind of wanted to make a lair and, and they were, I just looked and I thought that's a minion shape I'm gonna make a make a minion fishing lair the difficulty is I wanted to take the kids fishing and I knew that there was no chance I was gonna get my two young kids to kind of go top water lair fishing and stay interested for more than 15 minutes so um, I made a bobber because I knew I could go down there stick a maggot on and catch a fish within a few minutes and we did I think we caught two or three fish before they started screaming and were bored and wanted to go home and play on the PlayStation or whatever they do uh, the material I made this out of is um, is polyurethane resin I've forgotten which one it is but it was from smooth on and you could color it so it's colored yellow basically the resin and the rest of it's painted um, and it was rotocast and a little rotocast machine that I made um, I did make a I did make what did I make I made a motorized rotocasting machine but it was completely useless um, so so I and I made a video which took me two weeks to make a video about a electrical electronic rotocasting machine for rotocasting and it didn't bloody work so I had to scrap the video so that's one of those things that you'll never see uh, wasn't the plastic yeah what I what I sculpted it's odd, oddly enough is what I sculpted this from I'll tell you what I have got here actually which is what I sculpted the million minion from was a baby bell and um, just because I was too mean to buy sculpting wax now it wasn't that actually I'd ordered some sculpting wax and it hadn't turned up and I was kind of waiting to get on with it and in the end I just went and went and kind of used the wax and it actually worked really good really well just see if I can find the I did have a clear version and if anybody's seen the baby bell video anybody seen the the video where I made the minion bobber there's a bit where there's a little minion that goes up to <laughs> goes up to heaven I don't know why perhaps I've been drinking but one of the little minions goes up to hell heaven and I actually cast a clear resin minion just to film that little shot and lo and behold I have no idea what the hell I've done with it so you just have to believe me when I say that anything else I think we've drawn a blank haven't we I don't know what's I'd like to make a donation to your channel oh would you that's very nice I kind of like you <laughs> because I love the content but I just don't quite understand how patreon works how does patreon work well basically patreon is is a it's a kick it, it's 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 not like Kickstarter what you do is you pledge an amount per video I make now that's not these live stream videos, that's the videos where I actually start with something and end up making a fishing lure. So you pledge an amount per video, it can be as little as one dollar. Um, and you can also set a monthly total. So what that means is, you know, if I suddenly decide that every morning I'm gonna get up and make a video and charge, <laughs> that you're not gonna end up paying for a video every day, you can set one or two videos as a maximum. So, um, so basically you know where you are and of course you can cancel at any time what it does for me is because with the youtube the revenue is just so unpredictable um i can't get a grasp from one month to the next um what i can do what it gives me is a stable amount of money that i can put towards buying the materials that make these things you know it, everywhere you look down here there's chemicals that i buy you know that i'm using for these projects they're not particularly inexpensive they're not expensive on their own but you lump them together with i'm going to show you that again <laughs> with silicon i mean there's i don't know what's that 20 quids worth probably 10 quids worth 20 10 quids worth of silicon there so uh, you know it, it all costs money and when you're making videos you've got to pay for camera equipment you've got to pay for the sundries getting to places doing it so it, it's a kind of a stable thing so i can go right i've got this much i can go and order some chemicals and i, I can make something so basically how it works is you pledge an amount per video um and you set a maximum you pay with paypal i think you can pay with card i think there's a few other options use gypsum or how do you write that on the outside 
What made you start making layers? Um, I think I said that at the beginning. I think why I started making layers was because I lost so many. I think I spent, you know, in, in, a, in a weekend, I lost so many layers, and I just thought, you know what? They weren't great anyway. A lot of the layers that I bought were not didn't seem to attract fish. So I just thought, you know, what? I can do this myself. Why, why bother going out and spending a bolt load of money on stuff that's not particularly working and it's costing me a fortune because I was losing. Um, and that's what I did. Have you ever made a Dexter wedge, um, a cast master? I did once have a go at it to be honest. But it wasn't very successful. I cut down some brass rod at an angle, some heavy brass rod. I don't know what the hell it was from to be honest, up in Scotland, but not great. Um, I could probably cast one in pewter, which would be easy enough. It's one of those layers, it's it's like a spoon handle layer. It, it just kind of works. There's nothing, you know, you get the same effect if you take a, a knife handle and cut it down, as I did in the other video. Now there's from the other. So that's going to work as well as a cast master, you know, as well as a Dexter wedge. There's nothing particularly special about a Dexter wedge, um, apart from the fact that you may believe it's special. <laughs> but that's nothing to do with the lay. Uh, I'm going to go now. I'm going to get something to drink. Um, what's my favourite tool on the wall behind me? These are my dad's tools. This, actually. This is a, uh, and this. These are great. I've used these for so many things, for layer making and float making. I, I used to hate these bloody things. The only time I'd ever used one before um, for, was when I was in a hurricane up in Scotland and we had the power out and I needed to drill a hole to hold the polytunnel together that was blowing to pieces. Uh, that's the only time I'd ever used one in my life because I couldn't have a power tool. But for layer making, these are great. You know, I've used them for float making. I've used them for twisting up wires. I've used them for um, for drilling. I just kind of like them. They're kind of one of those bonkers bits of history that still kind of work. And I've got, a, you know, there's a cordless drill here. There's, um, there's all kinds of tools you can see. Ooh, let's just pick that up and I'll show you. Whoa! Sorry about that. So bandsaw, you know, there's a lathe behind it. There's all these racks of tools, but it's still, it's still just great to be able to pick up something simple like that and make, you know, and use it to make something. That, that, I really enjoy that. I really enjoy being able to do that. You know, and, and I think uh, Avil and all this equipment's great, but still, it's the enjoyment of going back to using something very basic a stanley knife you know taking a piece of wood and carving something with a stanley knife is as good as spending two weeks trying to sculpt something and then casting it in resin and piddling around with it um but i like all that have you ever tried any exotic woods i don't know what you're asking there actually <laughs> i tried any exotic woods for what yes um Oddly enough a, a lot of the woods i mean balsa is an exotic wood you know it's not something that's growing local um, what have I tried? That layer was made from American tulip wood that somebody sent me, the trout layer, which is a really nice, great wood. Um, I've tried some things, that are, some mahoganies and things like that for making glide baits and had limited success with them, to be honest. Um, what was the other? Purple heart, which is like... If somebody gives you a piece of purple heart, just punch them. Because it's not something you want to try and make a layer out of. Trying to carve purple hearts like that. Yeah. Um, so, can you do the did you do a video of the process? Who's not asking me? Can you do a video of the process like those soft plastic worms the other week, but for soft plastic shads? I might give it a go. I think I, I am going to do another shad video because I was out fishing with the shad I made and I caught a perch with it. But it, it wasn't great, you know, I made that shad a long time ago, the soft plastic shad. Um, and it wasn't great, to be honest. You know, now going back and fishing with it, it needs improvement. Uh, the tail section's too thick, it doesn't have enough action. And if I was making that today, I, I would go back and do so much different. So yes, a shad layer would be a great one to do. Um, do you make anything other than layers just out of interest? Yes, this evening I made slime. <laughs> 
<laughs> the kids have been going mad at me to make slime. So we, we got some borax and some PVA glue and some food colouring and made slime, which is a bonkers material to be honest. I was trying to get the slime and roll it into worms. Um, the only difficulty is with slime, this is like kids slime, is it when you put it back in water it does something weird and loses its stretch. So slime, I'm working on a, a marble lift. Um, my youngest son is obsessed with Matthias Wandel, is it? And his marble machine. So somewhere around here is a marble lift that's half finished that works that I'm motorizing. Um, yeah, I make furniture sometimes and bits of bobs. And as I say, 12 foot dogs. Have you ever made a hollow body frog? No, I've never. It's something that somebody asked me about and it, and, and probably something I want to do, to be honest, in the, in the in the future using latex. I've used latex to make molds. Um, latex kind of is natural rubber and you basically you can use it to dip things. So things like Plaster of Paris molds are made often made out of latex. But you can use that same latex to make hollow bodied frogs. You just have to dip, dip it over a mold and then remove it like you would unpeel a unpeel other rubber things off other things. This shows really turn into something else in it really. Uh, been asking that for a long time now. Yeah, as I say, I, I generally make things that interest me. So I don't, um, I can't make everybody everything for everyone. You know, generally I make something that interests me that week and, and that can change three, four times a day, you know, what I really want to make. Um, teach us to do ice cream of Learwood. I think you may have a problem with your um, translator there. Thanks for your time tonight. Really enjoyed it. 25 minutes ago great weekend cheers see you later i'm gonna go actually because i've been on far too long uh, cheers for everybody turned in i'm completely sorry that what i set out to do <laughs> completely failed i think i'm gonna have to have a rethink of what i do with live streams and maybe it's actually do something that i've practiced um i think that might be a more sensible idea the difficulty with that is i'm not going to be able to answer questions and use a lay it's just not possible to do that if not a bit dangerous um or if i'm airbrushing so i maybe i'll have to get somebody else to answer the to add, tell me the questions but it's, it's still not great to do two things um i'm gonna go thanks for all the comments for checking in on me as i say i, I think it kind of worked but it's not how i expected it to be uh, look out for the video for this which hopefully will be a couple of days uh, which is more soft plastics and then again the lizards see you later everybody cheers for tuning in